All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite show on the internet, Raw Law Without a Filter, with your favorite host of all time, the DUI Guy Plus. Today, uh, you're going to have to buckle up, folks, because it's the law. Uh, we did the first part of the Amber Heard Surviving Amber Heard documentary, if you weren't here for that. Oh, my God, what a doozy. Oh, my God, what a doozy. That was absolutely, positively crazy and so good. So good. I have not seen such a good documentary in a long time. Because pretty much like every single documentary about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp has been like, well, you know, she got so screwed over by like, um, you know, by like, um, the social media and like all these deppies are just like supporting Depp because they're deppies and there's no such thing as truth because they're Depp fans. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, will somebody for the love of everything that is holy make a documentary that is actually talking about the truth and the facts without trying to distort them. And here we are. production i am very very excited don't forget to like this video comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and of course join on as a member if you're so inclined membership start at 99 cents and they go up to however much you want you know to pay it's all it's all each each tier has like other stuff and super chat if you have questions and i will be happy to do it look at that we already got our first one already right out of the gate tim roberts thank you for joining on as a member and piggy thank you for being a member for eight months has it been eight months already my goodness it's like last summer you joined Piggy and here we are. Um, that's just absolutely crazy. Um, let me just make sure. Has it been playing in the background? I did not intend for that to happen. I hope that you guys did not. Uh, and Carrie, also a member for 11 months. Thank you so much, Carrie. Uh, chat is not slowed because we uh, we are good. Uh, let me know in the comments if I do need to slow the chat down. But let's LFG. Let's go, folks. Share, boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Part two. Did, did Johnny give you that bruise on your face? Did Johnny beat you up? The first part. My bad. My bad. This is the first part. Come on. This is the second part. Watch. Here we go. I I clicked the wrong one. I apologize. There we go. That's that's the one. The we first want. bottle went. Here we go. Just past my ear, and the second one was a larger bottle and she threw it from about this distance and it smashed into the bar which and and this this finger who i now call little richard uh, um god this is so hard the, the the tip of the finger was severed why are you trying to justify who throws things based because on whether or that, not you come knocking on the door i don't because get that why is a I fucking irrational and violent fucking maneuver thank you i'm so glad we're talking about this oh there's a disclaimer these events are according to what is available through the courts and the media we do not claim to have first-hand knowledge about what took place or the persons mentioned this narrative film is only meant to serve as a basis for social commentary nothing in it should be considered fact so just keep that disclaimer in mind is for stress it does not affect you psychologically at all you know look it up i don't fucking care i won't talk about fucking it anymore you can fucking look it up it clearly doesn't work does it no you don't and it doesn't calm you down psychologically it's supposed to slow your heart rate down um i said you hit me with the phone john you hit me the victim abuser role reversal becomes more and more apparent in amber's convoluted stories where she usually ends up the helpless victim at the hands of johnny such as the one where he supposedly assaults her repeatedly for simply asking about a tattoo of his there's music playing and he's smoking cigarettes and we're sitting next to each other on the couch and i ask him about the tattoo he has on his arm and said it says why no it says why no and i um 
I didn't see that. I thought he was joking uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. He slapped me across the face. And he slapped me again. Second slap, I know he's not kidding, but I don't know what else to say or do, so I just stared at him. I didn't say anything, I didn't react, I didn't move or freak out or defend myself or, or say, what are you doing? You're crazy. I just stared at him because I didn't know what else to do. And he slaps me one more time. Hard. I don't believe a word coming out of her mouth. And words in the audios tell a vastly different story about how nuclear she can be during a regular conversation. Yep. In the following recording, she's simply explaining to Johnny that he's wrong about the usage of a certain medication. I own what I say. I say what I fucking mean. I don't need anyone, fucking you or anyone, putting words in my goddamn mouth. I mean what I fucking say. You hear me. I mean what I say. I say what I mean. And you're not going to sit here and fucking change it for me. It does not make you learn. It does not affect you psychologically. It doesn't affect you. you fucking know. It does not make you fucking calm, as you can clearly see. And then he had this, like, black mesh tank top, not tank top, uh, it was like a meshy kind of shirt on. And my dog stepped on a bee. We went oh to the vet. God. I had just dyed this thing um, myself, pink. And I, it's just one of those things I was like, fuck. While telling the convoluted stories, Amber appears to add random details to make her narrative believable. One of them is when she tries to paint Johnny as an animal abuser, again appearing to ascribe her own actions to Johnny. He grabs his, his dog. He's howling like, like an animal while holding the dog out of the window of the moving car. Everyone in the car, I'll never forget it, everyone just froze. No one did anything. And I, I too was like torn as to what I should do because I didn't want to do anything to cause him to react, drop the dog. You know, it was just this eerie moment. Amber's stories and her behavior drew mass satirization on social media, despite them being about a very sensitive subject. Looking at the dirty carpet, wondering never why I never noticed that the carpet was so. Oh, funny such a dirty before, carpet! That's right, I forgot about that. Notice. You know, like. This is this is the hallmark of someone that you know is not telling the truth. By the way, do you like my mug? <laughs> Cat dad. Cat dad. Anyway. Um, this is the hallmark of someone that you know is not telling the truth. Because they're like, they try to make like little, uh, little, um, like I noticed, I noticed a detail on the carpet, but it's, you can tell it's fabricated because they're not looking, what is it, like the bottom left? They, they look at like the bottom right because bottom left is a memory. Bottom right is a fabrication. Um, I don't, it's not true for everybody, but it, it is one of the, the tricks. Ask, uh, what's his name? The body language expert. He'll tell you. Say, because God, did he just hit me? At this point, we're sitting next to each other at the, on the edge of the couch. Or I was on the edge of the couch. I was just sitting there on this carpet, looking at the dirty carpet, carpet and why I was never why i never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before the carpet was just so filthy how did it get so dirty did mr depp ever help you clean those filthy shags well we had arrangements that he would vacuum on fridays and i would clean the rest of the week the public is picking apart every detail of this high profile trial with a lot of criticism and mockery directed right at her Instead of reporting the facts of the case, the media would primarily focus on this satirization. But Michelle Weldon, an author and survivor of domestic abuse, doesn't think any of this is funny. Is this mocking of Amber Heard going to make victims of domestic violence Oops. scared to come forward? Absolutely. That is one outcome of this trial. I think it's terribly dangerous to her personally and also to every woman who goes to domestic violence court to file Disregarding court. the thousands of genuine domestic violence victims that say that Amber is the one slashing their credibility because she's virtue signaling and exploiting their pain for financial gain. It's social justice. She has spearheaded policies to better serve residents of all ages and created the West Hollywood Community Response Team for Domestic Violence. 
male-dominated power structure. Fearless speech. I need to do because God, did he just hit me? The constant staring at the jury came off as if she was trying to see if the jury was buying the convoluted stories and the absurdity of filler details that she sounds like she's making up as she goes. A member of the jury, after the trial, describes how unsettling the staring she directed at them was. They also say that her stories didn't add up and describe her demeanor while on the stand as the crying, the facial expressions she had, the staring at the jury. All of us were very uncomfortable. She would answer one question and she would be crying, and two seconds later she would turn ice cold. Some of us used the expression crocodile tears. This observation can also be made when Amber was deposed in 2016. We can take a break, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Okay. And you, and you believe that the time you obtained this restraint... Well, if she has 10 more minutes, I'd, I'd rather wrap it's this up. Minutes. Well, I'd rather power through, but, yeah. I mean, I don't... No, I don't just no, and get this shit over with. Breaking? One of the most cringeworthy moments in Amber's testimony is when, during yet another convoluted story, she appears to stop mid-tearless crying and poses when she hears and notices cameras flashing. Wow, yeah, I forgot about that. And after you both return to poses. I mean, she, she is a poser, so I guess she's living up to that reputation. If once a poser, she poses it. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. Do it. Doing lines of coke. Mr. Depp, communicate. Absurd moments such as this were plentiful, and so were their reenactions on social media. My dog stepped on a bee and went to the bed and went on with our, you know, Vicky. Stop lying about Johnny. I have special needs. And wanting his money. I saw him give me a bee. My dog stepped on a bee. Objection relevance. <laughs> the bee is like objection it relevance. It seemed as if the That's world epic. that was captivated by this story was offended by the deceptive traits Amber displayed and needed a comedic relief moment amidst all the drama and the darkness of this highly publicized affair. The trial would then take an even darker turn when Amber would make her most dangerous claim yet. In what comes across as a last ditch effort to bury Johnny Depp in his reputation, Amber Heard appears to flip the violent incident as the trial reveals she hurled a glass bottle at him, severing part of his finger on March 8, 2015 move. in Australia into him move. sexually assaulting her with a bottle. To back this alleged incident, it's funny. Amber tells he has the proof of everything. She has proof of absolutely nothing. What a coinkydink. She had another convoluted story where she ends up being the helpless victim of Johnny's monstrous ways. But countless pieces of evidence unveil the story about what actually happened that day in Australia. She was irate. She 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 was irate and she was possessed. You always split. I have to get out of the room. It was violent. It was before it was violent. You oh, split every time. You no. split every time, Johnny, whether clothing. it's violent or not. I think that I ended up locking myself in about at least at least nine bedrooms, bathrooms. We're talking about splitting. I'm not asking you to stand there while I punch you. Come no. on. We're talking about me. Yeah, getting out of the room. Or leaving but in Australia, I didn't leave the fucking house. I went to other rooms. And I'm sitting on a bathroom floor, door locked. She's banging away, banging away, screaming, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly she stopped. 
and I could hear her walk away. And again, I've been sober for many, many months. I went downstairs, a sort of a rec, rec area, pool table and such. There was a uh, bar. I was a mess. I was a wreck. I was shaking and I just didn't understand why. I went behind the bar. I grabbed a bottle of vodka that was there and a shot glass and sat at the bar. She was nowhere around. Poured myself two or three stiff shots of, uh, of the vodka. First taste of alcohol I'd had in a long time. Then she came down to the bar and found me there. She, she, she walked up to me and reached and grabbed the, the bottle of vodka. Kind of stood back and then hurled it at me. It just went <laughs> right past my head and smashed behind me. <sighs> Why are you trying to justify who throws things? Welcome to the this channel, Charlie. You come knocking on the door. I don't because get that is a fucking irrational and violent fucking maneuver. I stood up and I walked behind the bar and there was a larger bottle of vodka, the kind with the handle, you know, on it. I grabbed that and I went and I sat in my seat again and I poured myself a shot, drank it. Missouri was flinging insults uh, left, right, and center, and she then grabbed that bottle and threw that at me. So if this is the bar where the glass was and the bottles, this was the bar and I'm sitting here like this, she would grab the bottle and she would go there, she went there. And so I was leaning like this in the chair, looking at her. First bottle went, then got the other bottle shot. Takes the second bottle, which was the larger one. I'm in this position again. She threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. Despite Johnny letting them. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I want to share this with you all real quick. I found this. Uh, I, I didn't find it. Um, <laughs> I didn't find it, find it. But um, let, let me see here if I can if I can show you guys. Did some uh, Somebody sent this to me. Check this out. Uh, how do I? I don't want to, I don't want to dox anybody. Damn it. How can I share just, mm, I don't want to dox anybody. Can I just share like a, a part of the screen? Because it'll show all my messages. I don't want to do that. Well, not my private messages, but it will, it'll show a bunch of names. How do I, how can I edit? Bloody hell. Ed, ed, uh, camera slot, no. Do a screen snip? How do I do a screen snip? Present slides. It, it's because I'm I'm in uh, I'm not in the YouTube uh, uh, studio. I'm in I'm in uh... oh wait a minute. Share screen window. No, I can only do entire screen. Window, Chrome tab. I can't cover it with my hand, unfortunately. Find your snip tool. I don't have a snip tool. It's it's uh, it's StreamYard. Control. Well, I can I can do Control Print Screen, but it's not um, it's not a photo. It's a video. It's not. It's a video. Oh, bloody hell! Hold on. Let me figure this out real quick. Um, 
Oh, I know how I can do it. I just figured it out. I just figured it out. I just got to find it now. Uh, when did they post it? They posted it two days ago. Okay. I posted it two days ago. So all I have to do is find it two days ago. March 3rd. That's not it. That's not it. There it is. Found it. Okay, there we go. Got it. Got it. Here we go. Okay. Now nobody's getting docs. Have you guys seen this? This is um this is uh <laughs> this is an account by the name of the Snicker Cat. This is an account by the name of the Snicker Cat. Ah, uh, thank you, and uh, uh, New Zealand Kiwi, New Zealand. Okay, so this is the Snicker Cat. Um, this is so the bird. The bird is Camille Vasquez, and the mouse is Amber Heard during the cross examination. Ready? The mouse is Amber Heard. Camille Vasquez is the bird. Camille Vasquez is the bird. And Amber Heard is the mouse. Watch this. Oh, boom. Oh, and Johnny is the cat. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe Johnny is the bird and Camille Vasquez is the cat. I don't know. But it's like, boom, just death, instant death. It's like, I mean, I feel bad. I feel bad for the mouse. I'm not going to lie, but the analogy works. It's like the bird just like lead it, let it, like, like clap. Johnny is driving, fucking clap, bro. Oh my God. I, I, I mean, I hate to share this. This is like, this is death literally on, of, of an animal live on screen. And it just keeps playing on repeat, but it's, it's just so fucking good. I can't. Um, oh yeah, I'm watching Tug <laughs> while I'm, <laughs> oops, <laughs> I'm watching Tug while, while I'm watching Amber Heard, <laughs> surviving Amber Heard. ...live in his luxury houses for free. Amber's friends... The rat, like Amber. <laughs> ...the severed finger he sustained on that fateful day That's in Australia. All the, all the bone in here was uh, completely shattered. I mean, it's, it looked like Vesuvius. And then I got infections. I, I, I ended up with MRSA twice, so it's very complicated. I was trying to just get the finger back, you know, and and then deal with the insanity of having had my finger chopped off by, by this woman that I was married to. Johnny's account of what happened has been consistent in the legal proceedings and depositions over the years. Whereas Amber's stories appear to have elements added or modified throughout the years, like the night of her birthday before she went on the Coachella trip, only until February 2022 that she suddenly recalls that Johnny not only hit her that night, but also sexually assaulted her. You testified about this incident multiple times, haven't you? That is correct. Nonetheless, you testified to a new detail about your 30th birthday for the first time in this courtroom, didn't you? Uh, no, that's incorrect. A sexual assault, no less. I had just not placed when that happened. I was never, I was never sure if that was the same time that he did that on the night of my birthday. And I, Amber seemed to recall filler details like what she thought about the cleanliness of the carpet on an occasion she claimed she was slapped by Johnny. Why I never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before? Because God, did he such just a dirty, it? dirty and carpet. She was raped the night of her 30th birthday right before going to Coachella with her friends to have fun and consume drugs. And I do the vodka bottle. You can poke an animal no matter how calm you are. The vodka you can poke them. On that day of this incident, March 8th, 2015, Amber sends her psychologist a text admitting an inability to change her volatile tendencies. In the trial, Amber attempts to spin this admitted inability to change her behavior into an inability to change her relationship. March 8th is the day that you were allegedly sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp in Australia, correct? That is correct. 
and Mr. Depp's finger had just been cut off, right? That is correct. And you write to Dr. Cowan, quote, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. You weren't able to change, were you, Ms. Heard? I very much wanted to leave the relationship I was in, but I didn't have the power. I didn't feel I had the power to leave. And I knew I needed to change that. I knew it was, at this point, figure this out, meaning the relationship. Not the relationship. Your text messages, clearly I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. In one of the audio recordings, Amber expresses her struggles with changing her violent behavior. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get I can't promise that I won't be hitting you in the face, Johnny. I'm so mad. I lose it. I can fucking promise you I'm going to do everything to change. I promise you. There is a more damning recording that is reportedly from that dark day in that Australian house. In it, Dr. Kipper and Nurse Debbie Lloyd are desperately searching for the tip of Johnny's finger within the rubbles of the shattered glass bottles on the floor near the bar area. At one point, Amber seems to give them directions on where to find it. During parts of the recording, Amber sounds hysteric in the background, apologizing and vocally reaching out for explanations, which Dr. Kipper labels as guilt. Dr. Kipper suggests to Debbie that Amber needs to take her antipsychotic medicine Seroquel, which is used to treat schizophrenia, mania, and bipolar disorder. pretty hysterical sobbing, crying, um, which sounded like misheard to me. After a short while, Debbie returns and tells Dr. Kipper that Amber refused to take 50 milligrams of the Seroquel, and she instead took her usual dose of 25 milligrams. She won't take 50, I gave her 25, 300, and then you that a little bit. A late beloved A-list celebrity bodyguard named Jerry Judge, known as Life Angel in Hollywood, can be heard trying to convince Amber to go back to Los Angeles. But she seems very resistant to that idea because she doesn't know what to say to people when she's back in L.A. Oh, thanks, Shmurli. I'm Israel Chai. I heard Jerry Judge's voice. There's a few steps as you go up into the house, so you can't immediately see what's going on. But so I went up the steps. I could see then Miss Heard over on the right hand side of towards the TV room with Jerry Judge. Welcome to Jerry Chanel Judge Kells. afterwards can be heard on the phone with a female family member of Johnny, mostly calming her worries about Johnny's health state and informing hey, her FBS. of his efforts to convince Amber to go back home to Los Angeles. <laughs> Is a sheep, but I think it's 
Malcolm Connolly, a no-nonsense English bodyguard whose room Johnny was sleeping in after his finger was severed on March 8th in Australia, recalls Amber's state when he arrived to take Johnny to the hospital and what she was saying to him as he was being transported. And how did Miss Hurd seem to you when, when you saw her on that day when you arrived to extract him? Crazy. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Fierce, you know, fierce. What was the uh, what was the last thing Miss Hurd said as you were taking Mr. Depp out of the house to to go to your apartment and then the hospital? Uh, the last word, words I recall hearing is as I'm getting Johnny out is yeah just fuck off you guys you're fucking covered like you always do. Just relentless again. She didn't think like any of this will ever come out. She thought she had the upper hand. She controls the narrative. She's a woman. Everyone is going to believe her. No one is ever going to believe Johnny. I mean, we heard it from the horse's mouth. Go, Johnny. Go and tell the world, I, a man, I, a man, was assaulted by a woman. No one's going to believe you. No one's going to believe you, you asshat. I'm going to put you in a hat rack. And Johnny was like, okay, let's see who wins. And he won. Truth wins. Nowhere in the audio of that day, medical professionals Nurse Debbie and Dr. Kipper, who is also Amber's doctor, despite her trying to deny it, made any mention of the horrific injuries Amber described in her convoluted rape assault story that supposedly happened right before this audio was recorded. Nor did Jerry Judge, Ben King, or Amber herself. From the audios, the only medical attention Amber was given is her usual dose of the antipsychotic drug Seroquel. And the main thing that seems of a concern to her is what to say after the incident that injured her movie star husband. Dr. David Kipper is Mr. Depp's, or was Mr. Depp's physician. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician. Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia. Debbie Lloyd also came to the house that day. Yes, she came with Kipper. And you testified that you bled as a result of this sexual assault. That is correct. All right. And you testified that your forearms were cut. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries. Is there, Ms. Hurd? I didn't seek treatment. Eventually, Ben King found the fingertip around the shattered vodka glass. Directly at the end of the bar, there was a scrunched up piece of kitchen paper, if you like, tissue, um, with lots of blood around it, on it. So I thought that was probably a pretty good place to look. And it, it was within that scrunched up piece of paper on the tiled floor at the end of the bar the base of the bar by one of the bar stools. Got a bag, you know, a little, um, little plastic bag, put the fingertip in there, set it on top of some ice, and pretty much handed it over to David Kipper and Jerry Judge, I think at the time, who were keen to get it to the hospital quickly to see if it could be reattached. Johnny's reason for being in Australia was the filming of the fifth installment of the Disney franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean. The production was halted because of Johnny's injury. In what appears to be a way to protect Amber from the press, it was leaked to the media that the production was halted because Johnny broke his wrist in a go-karting accident and has to be flown back to the U.S. for surgery. Yeah, I remember ben that. Ben King kept his word and accompanied Amber back to Los Angeles. You flew back to Los Angeles the next day with Ben King. I can't be certain if it was uh, the next day or the day after, but somewhere around there, yes. We were flying first class, which was lovely. She was in the window seat, like I think it was 1A, 1B window seat. I had the aisle seat. I did sort of say finally, so what happened? 
you know, obviously referring to the house. She didn't give much explanation, if any. She did say, um, Ben, have you ever been so angry with someone you just lost it with them? I sort of said, uh, no. Actually, I'm a pretty calm, even-tempered guy. Um, but she did repeat it. She looked pretty incredulous that I hadn't. And she repeated it. You mean you've never lost it with somebody, got so angry with someone, you just lost it with them? Mm. I can't mm. promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad, I lose it. When you were interacting with her, how close were you to her? Very close, you know, like... Very, very close, in front of her. Do you recall observing any injuries on this herd? No, none whatsoever. The many people who saw Amber when she arrived in L.A. testified they didn't see any of the horrific injuries she described, including her own nurse, Aaron Filati, and driver Travis McGivern. And what time of day was it when Miss Hurd arrived at the airport? Early afternoon. Um, I want to say they landed at around 1 p.m. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Miss Heard that day? I didn't notice any injuries. And the day you arrived back in Los Angeles, you saw Travis McGivern? I don't recall seeing Travis, no. You don't recall Mr. McGivern picking you up from the airport with Ben King? I don't remember that, no. What did you do? Of course, after very kind You know who Angeles. she reminds me of, by the way? I completely forgot. You know who she reminds me of when she testifies? Police officers. Anytime you ask a cop, like, um, you know, and and then uh, what did you see? Oh, I saw, you know, them exit out of the car and they were they appeared very intoxicated. OK. And like in a DUI case. And then I'll ask them like, OK, so uh, they appeared intoxicated. OK, fine. Uh, did you see them, you know, stumble? Oh, yes, I saw them stumble. OK. And did you see them weave? Oh, yeah, I saw them weave. And then uh, he admitted to having no beers. Oh, no, I don't remember that. Nope. He don't remember them saying they haven't been drinking. Nope, nope. I don't remember that happening because why? It's a good fact. They don't want to admit to a good fact. And then they said that, um, you know, they were on their phone. That's why they were weaving. Nope, I don't remember that fact either. And then they told you this and that, good fact. Nope, nope, don't remember that good fact. Um, oh, okay, but this bad fact happened. Oh, yes, oh, yes, bad fact absolutely happened. But you, what about this good fact? Nope, nope, don't remember. Don't remember this good fact. It's literally like that. She's acting like a police officer on cross-examination. By the way, I paused it at like a really weird juxtaposition of like superimposed am like uh, next witness over Amber. That was an accident. <laughs> we would be picked up by one of Mr. Depp's security personnel, who I, I think was Travis McGiven. He met us in the place that had been arranged, got in the car with him, and uh, drove to the Eastern Columbia building. And the same day, you also saw your own nurse, Erin Barem Filotti, that day, correct? The day you arrived in Los Angeles? I don't recall if I saw her that day. Amber's nurse, Erin Filotti, documented that she did see her and saw no injuries on Amber. Correct. If you look at the entry for March 9th, I refer to meeting her and her friends. So yes, I would have met her uh, in person that day. Do you recall observing any injuries to Miss Hurd when she when you saw her on March 9th, 2015? No, I don't recall. I don't I don't make note of it, but don't recall either. If Miss Hurd had had visible injuries, is that something that you would have documented in your nursing notes? I would assume so. Mm. The many available recordings reveal that Johnny was living with a deep fear of situations such as this one that required him to undergo multiple surgical procedures. Baby, I told you this once. I'm scared to death of it. We are a fucking crime scene. Baby. No. He can be heard emphasizing to Amber that something tragic like this would eventually occur if he doesn't escape fights, which she appears to favor. Walking away is necessary, is necessary, especially between you and I. It is of utmost importance because the next move, if I don't walk away or just go out for a little while, just it's just going to be it's just going to be a bloodbath. In one instance, when Johnny explains to Amber that he left because she hit him, she can be heard avoiding to delve into the details and complaining that he. Oh shoot! Charlie Penguin Zero is live. 
I haven't seen him in so long. He's been talking about some evolution of Twitch, by the way. I don't know if you guys, he always covers like he's like the the Reddit of uh, of uh, uh, of YouTube. He's like the front page of YouTube. He has all the latest news. I I go to him for like all the latest Twitch news and stuff because he streams a lot on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, if you haven't followed Charlie Penguin Zero, by the way, he's a solid G. I like to like pop in sometimes and gift him some subs. Um, if you haven't seen him, he's apparently there's like all these women who found a loophole on nudity. Have you have you guys heard about this? Just sorry to segue real quick, but this has been like this is literally the last couple of days. I'm like these women are literally streaming them playing video games on their ass like live. Like what the fuck? Like what the fuck? I don't get it. I don't get it. God, in these photos. Oh my god, it takes me back to the trial. Oh my god. Poor Johnny. Pop up his channel. Uh, sure, I can do that real quick. I don't mind. I I love uh I love Charlie, but he's he's probably playing a video game. Let's see. Yeah, he's playing a video game. This is Charlie. If you guys have not seen him, wait. He's not even at his computer chair. Oh, is he watching a tournament? I don't know. He's not even at his chair. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll come back to him. Believes even when there's no physical violence. Charlie Penguin Zero. I love him. He's so funny. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking. I'm not gonna get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence. And that you do yeah, it, he's uh, moist critical. The beginning of fights these days. But it's Johnny appears to be stuck in a dire situation. He's moist critical on Twitch. If he stays to have the fights, he's fearful of the physical violence. And when he escapes them, Amber appears to berate and insult him as being cowardly and unmanly. You fucking suck my dick, you fucking cowardly ball of piece of shit. Yeah, the last word, words I recall hearing is as I'm getting Johnny out is... Yeah, just fuck off with your guys. You're fucking covered like you always do. And I did call you pussy. And I, like, again, I said I was sorry for calling you pussy. I called you one name for every time. I did not call you in, in Toronto. I did not call you. No, I did not. I did not call you a coward. You have the tapes, Mr. Yes, I will. I did not call you that in Toronto. I have called you that before. But for everything, every time you heard pussy, which you're so obsessed that you got called, and I'm so sorry, that must be so tough that no. you got called that one name. No. Even Johnny's son, you, Jack, Amber. seemed like fair game for Amber to use to insult Johnny and highlight his supposed unmanliness. Oh, to God. Oh, to God. Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than even fucking in your fucking left nut. Fucking deadbeat dad. Travis McGivern recalls some of the fights he witnessed. So it was typically, I'd get a text from Mr. Depp. I would go to penthouse three, either stay by the door as requested or in the kitchen. And then, I mean, it was just verbal, verbal arguments, yelling. It was typically Mr. Depp wanting to get out of there and trying to convince Ms. Hurd to, to let us leave. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours, okay? Stop. Why are you saying stop? May so, I go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe this. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing immense stress right now when you walk away like that. No, I haven't. Psycho, away. you're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Oh yeah, I mean, lots of name calling, lots of. F-bombs, uh, you know. Who was the name calling directed at? So that was typically Miss Heard directing her feelings toward Mr. Depp. What do you recall Miss Heard saying in those instances? Oh dear. It would vary. And to be honest, I, I tried to not pay attention. I was just there to get Mr. Depp out of there. But there were times I've heard Miss Heard call him a fucking washed up, fucking deadbeat dad, fucking cunt, you name it. She, she's spewed it. In one of the audios, Johnny resigns himself to being called names 
like a coward for running from Amber's volatility, overstaying and enduring its consequences. Indeed, yeah. but if things get heated, yeah. and it looks like it's going somewhere nasty, and the name calling begins, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I've got to get away. Mm -hmm. Because it, I don't want to be ever in a situation again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stand and fight with you. I will I not. You can I call me a coward. I don't you want can call that. me anything you want. All those names, do it. But I will not. The following disturbing audio depicts yet another example of Amber calling into question Johnny's manhood as an insult. It's revealed in Oh, oops, I just realized I was talking into air. Um, yeah, this is Charlie, by the way, just real quick, just for a second. We're not gonna be here very long. I'm just here for a second. Uh, Charlie is uh, is a G. Charlie is a homie. Um, he's watching somebody right now, but he's, uh, what's his name? He's Moist Critical on Twitch. He's Moist Critical on Twitch. So absolutely go go subscribe to him on Twitch. He's got like 6,000 people watching. Good for him. It's a small audience, but it's uh, it's a Saturday or Sunday, so it's all good. Go go check him out. Other houses to resume the fight he escaped from. Oh, he's hosting a tournament. There we go. Thanks, Hatsune. <laughs> That fake laugh is too much to take. No, I'm sure she. That fake laugh is so, <laughs> so disgusting. Let's send him some subs. I'm sure she's great. Um, but I'll say you. Oh, come on. I don't want to say it. Oh, come on. Lay it on me. What else? What else other thing do you want to add? You to fucking lying people. Oh, no, I want to know. You know. I want to know. There was, there were even a couple of times when I did escape and I got to my house. Five minutes later, she would arrive. She would arrive in her nightgown, screaming in the parking lot in front of in front of my house, uh, screaming to high heavens. It'd be four in the morning, three in the morning. It was ludicrous. It was it was uh, it was out of control. It was uncontrollable. Get out of yeah, Wait, is there no other place for you to run in your 15 other houses to go run? Come on, go be a real married man. Go deal with your shit the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Every man does. Yeah. Go. Run right away. I know it's hard to look at yourself. It's fucking ridiculous plan. Absolutely it's ridiculous. Plan. It's hard. It's hard. It's screwing everybody else. Yeah, same here, West Virginia. <laughs> That's what I do. Johnny asks Amber to leave, informing her that her Uber has arrived, which prompts her to taunt him, saying that she will stay longer instead and that he needs to take the Uber to run away. She would sarcastically ask him whether he ran out of places to run to in his 15 other houses. Then she would proceed to challenge him to run away like a man would do, again pointing out his supposed unmanliness. <laughs> oh my god, that laugh. Oh, right. It's right. so That's terrifying. You're right, you gotta figure it out. You don't have to figure out what you have to offer as opposed to going out and getting your kicked out. You're right. That's what I That is so scary. Lots of the full audio of this consists of Johnny attempting to reason with Amber about wanting to, to avoid fights and her taunting him about running away from them. Except this time, she doesn't do it in the way their couple's therapist described as jackhammer speech. She instead uses a trenchant, sarcastic speech with some villain-like bursts of manic laughter that appear designed to drown Johnny's relaxed way of talking. Ms. Heard had a jackhammer style of talking. Jackhammer style. He had trouble talking at a similar pace. That was a sound that I got me very used to. Wait, what does that mean, Israel? We're making law in part based on this case? Raised due to cut and no longer opposed to divorce proceedings, domestic violence injury claims as of last fall. That's interesting. The, the raising of the voice to excommunicate the anything that I have to say about uh, the situation. Good for you. He was cut off a lot, and so he was really Thank you for overwhelmed. Your support In the middle well. of Amber's hysteria, Johnny even ventures to give her life advice about the image she puts out versus the real one. 
Oh, oh good God, the here. laughter. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You got to figure it out. You don't yeah. have to figure out what you have to offer as opposed to going out and getting your kids out. You're right. What That's month crazy. is this? March? Damn, I got to do my taxes for a month Amber, away. Amber, on another occasion, asks Johnny's help with her anger, then tells Johnny that she becomes human cancer and way harder to reason and rationalize with when he retreats for longer than a few minutes. Now, when you start, when you start fucking honking, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's pretty, it's call it out, call pretty, me out on it and help me. I will, I will help try. Help me if I might not even realize I'm doing it, but you've got to help me. I but will we try. can't, can't be an excuse to leave. I will try to help you. If I try to help you and I can help you, fuck what I leave. If I try to help you and I can't help you, say, baby, take in an hour, I'm in my fucking you want to talk, don't come get me. Otherwise, I'll come check on you in an hour. That, that would be really helpful. All right? Say an hour. Even if you just say, it will, you know, in, like, I promise if we resume this, I just need to know that we will talk about it. Otherwise, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with something that just festers. And it gets worse and worse. So you have to realize that, it, you know, in that kind of situation, a few minutes <laughs> is fine, but then after a certain point, it becomes way worse and become way harder to reason to rationalize with come that human cancer state is what seems to play out in the audio with the unsettling laughter. <laughs> I just can't every time I hear that laughter I want to run and hide. A recording reveals that at least on one occasion Amber threw Johnny out in anger for simply thinking that he might run away from a potentially volatile situation. You're about to fucking split. I don't want to feel like that. You made me feel meaningless. That's a you problem. You know the bed room. Yeah, why wouldn't I if I know that, that you're about to split? I mean, that's what I'm saying. You always split. about to split. You always split. So that's why wouldn't I mean, I do blame myself for my actions. I was laying in bed watching television, man. I was laying in bed watching television. I felt last night. If he splits and escapes, Amber admitted to chasing after him. There is an audio where he appears to be running away from an angry Amber as she is yelling at him in the distance. In one instance, Johnny sounds shaken as she tells him to come closer to her. Oh. Please come yeah. here. Please come here. I'm not insulting you. I have no. not been oh insulting you. God. I love you. Johnny, what do you mean no. you do? No. I love you. No, no, Stop. no, no, no. Smack me on the ear again. No. Smack my ear again. So it fucking resounds in my fucking cranny. You like that? Nope. The contrast is striking in the recordings. Amber wants to be able to be mad, wants Johnny to be there for it, and not retreat when she's mad. You yeah. need to let me be able to she be wants mad. Control. Sometimes you're going to make me mad. I'm a human. I cannot live where it's like... Whereas Johnny advocates for peace and retreating. Yep. But we, we've got to get our shit together as yep. individuals and as a couple. Because I love you. I do not want to leave you. I do not want to divorce. I do not want you out of my life. I just want peace. Yep. Yeah, Matt, it happens. It happens. Yes, I know. It happens often. Often, when Johnny advocates That's for not retreat, love. Exactly, James. Amber retorts with objections. I don't want to instigate any fights. I do not want to fight anymore. Say we're having an argument and you get mad. An argument's How argument. Can, yes, but say we're having an argument and you get mad. And even the example where she agrees that one hour cooldown would help her with her anger, she panics shortly after and reduces the period to a few minutes after which she says she becomes human cancer that's hard to reason or rationalize with. Whoa. I'm trying to help you. That's deep. So baby, that is so deep. An hour, I'm in my fucking office. Calling her a human cancer is so accurate. Get me. Otherwise, I'll come check on you in an hour. 
Yeah, give me give me time, woman. Just give me. Nope, you're not allowed to leave. Just say that's not that's not normal. Like I promise, if we're doing this, I just need to know that we will talk about it. Otherwise, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with something that just festers and it gets worse and worse. So you have to realize that it, you know in that kind of situation, a few minutes is fine, but then after a certain point, it becomes way worse and become way harder to reason to rationalize what come. Amber seems to try everything to convince Johnny to stay and not retreat when she becomes unhinged. In what sounds like a manipulative tactic, Amber even tries to guilt trip him about being wealthy and having multiple houses that he retreats to. If things get physical, we have to separate. Well, yeah. We yeah. have to be apart from one another, whether it's for a fucking an hour or 10 hours or fucking a day. We must. There can be no physical violence. I agree about the physical violence, but separating for a day or I'm, night I'm, and taking a night off from our marriage. No, no, no. It just means it opens up. Listen, I'm just giving examples. It, it could be fucking three minutes. It could be fucking two weeks. It, I'm just no, saying. You need to agree. You know what I mean? I'm not saying anything negative. I know. All I'm saying is we need to take whatever time we need. You need what I need. This is the thing that makes me feel unsafe and unsafe. To be honest, this is what makes me not trust. What's up? It's the, that there's like... Walking away, going to a corner. No, loophole. It's like, oh, okay, well, take the time you need, take the time I need. Okay, fine, every time I get mad at you, I can go split. Except for, oh wait, I don't have my own place to go split to. No, Amber, stop. You know, it makes me think I should. It makes me, uh, you know, I, I don't have a place I can go. I don't have a, I'd have to go to a hotel, you know? Wait, wait. I don't wait, have the funds to do that. I mean, it's... Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. Anything I fuck up, God, if I yell, if I fuck up, ever ditched. That's not marriage. You know, most people don't have to. Yeah, so leave, to. Amber. If so you're not happy, your leave. House. No one is you forcing you to stay. I never fucking said, this is my house and my house only. Kind of. But I, no. I know yesterday I. No, it's our fucking house. Mr. Sir, do you contend that there's another incident of abuse in March of 2015 after you and Mr. Depp returned from Australia, is that correct? That's correct. Amber's claims that she suffered a violent sexual assault and multiple attacks at the hands of Johnny in Australia become even weaker after what happens next is revealed. Two weeks later, after the alleged rape, Amber would confront Johnny, her alleged rapist, for cheating on her. So this is shortly after Mr. Depp supposedly sexually assaulted you with a bottle. It was two weeks after he assaulted me, yes. And you decided to confront him about cheating on you? Um, I, I didn't decide to. I, 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 I wanted to. Mr. Depp's finger was freshly injured at this point, right? He had a cast on it. The top of his right finger had been cut off two weeks prior. That is correct. And he had a pin in his finger. I don't recall when the pin was placed. I'm not quite sure he had several different procedures and they were kind of spread out over a period of time. So I don't remember what happened and what of those exactly. Procedures was to treat the MRSA that got on his finger too, right? At some point I knew he had an infection. There's plenty of items demonstrating Amber's affectionate treatment towards Johnny shortly after the supposed vicious rape, such as love notes and pictures where she's draped over him with his hand heavily bandaged, which brings to question whether that's how one treats their rapist shortly after they violate them. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was able to attack both you and your sister with mm -hmm. his hand in that state, right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. He had a hard plaster cast on it. Was, or when I was off. Uh, Michelle, no, this is this is about the finger. This is about the mutilation. Severity, this is the, the second injury. part. The I first part may be... Los Angeles have surgery. Most of the time, what I was... There's like 5% overlap or something. Just recuperating, you know, you know or just hanging you know, out. I didn't want to lose the finger. Because uh, MRSA, the MRSA uh, infection is really... Mm quite evil um, and I ended up with it twice so I was really just worried about losing a finger or an arm or story about the bottle and then Amber apparently created some story about you punching a wall or something like that she says that I did it myself yeah by punching a wall just another way to hurt you 
little over four weeks after the rape and attack that supposedly took place over three days, Amber would write her alleged violent rapist a love note saying, True love isn't about just the madness of passion or instead picking the safety of peace. No, it's about having both, falling madly in love with your friend. That is what has surprised me perhaps the most, that I have seen in you the true bones of friendship and respect. But of course, I still, perhaps more than ever, want to rip you apart, devour you, and savor the taste. Fret not, XX Slim. Yes, it's a love note. And you're slim, right? That's correct. Then, multiple additional love notes apologizing and promising him that she'll do better. I love you and I'm sorry. I miss my warm, loving husband. I can't imagine my life without you. I love you. I will do better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can get crazy. I'm sorry I hurt you. None of this is meant to be an excuse for hurting you. There is never a reason good enough to hurt you. The last person I ever meant to hurt. I hate having you hurt. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you. Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. I was always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing, I tried reading, I tried therapists, I tried everything to fix it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. Four months after the alleged rape, Amber goes with Johnny on a honeymoon to Southeast Asia and writes him yet another love note saying, I also couldn't wait to tell you how much I adore you. What a beautiful, extraordinary, magical, memorable, wonderful. Oh, by the way, yeah, this whole thing about how how magical, unbelievable, the most, the most, the most, wow, the most, da, da, da. That's, that's a delusion. That's a terrible delusion. Stunning, surprisingly evolving, and impulsive adventure. I couldn't have imagined a more gorgeous honeymoon. I love you more and more every passing day. Amber not only seems to flip the victim abuser roles, she appears to use old self-inflicted injuries and attribute them to Johnny. This is a picture of you with what appears to be straight red marks on your arms, correct? Those are scars from the broken glass. And they're straight and red. I disagree with how you characterize that. And sir, do you have a history of cutting yourself, don't you? I do not. You cut your arm once as a teenager, isn't that right? No, I said I wanted to. Um, when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager, I got, I felt crazy. And I said, we I have 10 more suicidal. minutes. So it's your testimony under oath. For part two, and then we'll do part three next week, probably. retained Or the week after. That you had cut yourself as a teenager once? I said, I, I told my mom that I wanted to. Stephen Crowley recalls noticing those cuts from when he worked with her long before she was in a relationship with Johnny. Because she has these marks on her arms. She said this from Johnny Depp. They look like cut marks. When we did a rehearsal uh, for Never Back Down, it was like, Amber had cut marks on her forearm. And I remember that because I was like, oh my God, this is so shocking. She's like so pretty, seems to have like everything going on. And she does that. I, I at that point, had never known anybody to be a cutter. So she, she was lying about that again on stand. Even after the Australian incident, Amber sounds like she still opposes Johnny retreating from fights. And makes me far more stressed and far more angry when you take off you use it yeah because i, I lose the narrative i lose the control on, don't, you that's can't, you can't act like you don't do it knowing it's going to make me mad I'm not, it's, no it's, you it's no not that's not mad. that's it's not healthy that's not normal to get out of a bad situation while it's happening exactly it's worse you know, it's so better to just big fight where I lost but she doesn't nothing. want him to see when he walks away from a situation she loses control she needs to be in control because when she's not in control she's not getting what she wants when she's in control she can pin johnny both literally and figuratively like i said like i alluded to in my first uh video earlier today about part one if you haven't seen it go on my channel check it out um yeah it's it's kind of like me and my dad I, I i remember it's it's exactly like it like he had to be in control of the narrative because the moment I leave, he's not in control, and that's bad for business. You know what I mean? At least 
five bathrooms and two bedrooms. I went to so to, hard, to, so hard to, to watch. To, to, me, to escape, to, to the escape problem. the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape no, he the escapes solution. the fight. No. Escape? no. When Johnny brings up the Australian incident as no. yet another you excuse need to, to retreat sometimes. from fights, it irritates Amber. She appears to be cautious, so she doesn't incriminate herself on record. She tells him to forget about that traumatic experience. Forget it. I don't want to fight about Australia. I don't want to talk to you about Australia. If you want to fucking persist and never let go of a goddamn thing, you never ever. Amber becomes furious when Johnny continues to talk about Australia to advocate for retreating, which prompts her to gaslight him, questioning his memory of that day, saying it's betraying him because of drug use. Yeah, me too, Lulu's mom. You were coke. You were fucking crazy. You didn't sleep. Yeah, I agree, day. Internet. You were delusional. You were psychotic. You are accurate. No, your memory's accurate. Your memory's accurate. You got it now. Your memory's perfectly accurate. You have fucking stand-up men. You fucking no. Oh, oh, and I'm, oh yeah, you're right. Okay. You know what? You're probably right. You're probably your memory, Johnny, is probably spot on and perfect, comparable to mine. As a way to excuse her volatile actions, Amber would compare herself to an animal being poked. I have tried to completely block it out. And I threw the vodka bottle. You can poke an animal. No matter how calm you are, you were fucking screaming at me. I'm not going to validate my actions last night. I feel very bad. No, I'm talking in Toronto. I, I did not start screaming until you had fucking said all this shit. You poke an animal enough, it is eventually, it doesn't matter how friendly it is, That's how not cool. True. I yeah. have not started the fight by saying I'm going to get in another room. And I'm not going to sit here and fight about fucking Toronto anymore. Guess what? I let it go. I'm not fucking about. In another instance, she even mocks his position of wanting to retreat. Anytime there's a fucking problem, you fucking run away and you make it worse. And you act like there's some hierarchy, some self-righteous thing that you're just doing the big thing, the honorable thing, and walking away. And in a confusing turn, Amber tells Johnny he's not retreating in an acceptable manner to her. You know what? I believe that horseshit. If you actually had ever done this, I need to cool down. I'm walking away. I'm not walking away from you. I want, I want to work this out. Just give me an hour. If you ever actually did it, responds of it, I'd say, yeah, you're right. You're being... You being the bigger person. That's not the case. You fucking run away. And there's a difference. Every time you get fucking stressed, every time I'm picking on you by because I don't have enough you. time to get those words in front of you, you I'm clearly on tape, fucking like just haranguing and not giving me a second to fucking speak. So I could easily say, hey, yeah. I need to know. You could try. I don't think you ever try. I can hear it when you're running away. In countless instances, Johnny calmly explains to her that he escapes not calmly. to leave her, but to de-escalate the situation before it gets worse. And here, she tells him that he needs to try harder to tell her that right before escaping, while she's screaming. If, if there's a dialogue between two people, both people need to speak, but there was no, there was no way to fit a word in. During the trial, Johnny mentions how confusing arguing with Amber can be. The argument would start here, and then it would roll around and become this circular thing of its own. So you get back to the beginning, essentially, of the argument. Now it's heightened even more, but it's still circular. And there's no way in or out. This confusion. Yeah, the is circular argument. The circular argument is, by the way, the hallmark of someone who is trying to um, spin the narrative, speak the truth, kind of like <laughs> I'm going to call him out again. For public safety, did it? Just it's like anytime you say something that they that they don't like, it's like, well, you're spinning the narrative, man. You're you're going. You need to go to the source, or you you don't have all the evidence. I mean, literally, um, Chris. Chris is reminding me of Amber Heard. No offense to him. It's just I'm I'm just spewing facts. This is what I feel like. Uh, I I don't care if he if he disagrees. Uh, it's the truth. I just don't I don't believe in his story. Um, he is welcome to at some point. We're probably in, in beginning of April. He's gonna try and um, come back on my channel. He wants to do it like on a separate channel. We'll see. I don't know. He's welcome to come back on my channel. If he doesn't want to come, he doesn't want to come. I can't force a man to do it. But um, 
it's this circular logic of like, I need to be in control. I need to be in control of the narrative. I need to. And the moment people start asking questions, well, you just don't understand. You just don't get it. You need to just shut up and listen to me. And I'm like, he reminds me a lot of Amber in the way that he's tr he's trying to control the narrative. When Amber throws some convoluted reasoning together, Johnny audibly expresses how lost he is. Why are you through the cans at me in Australia? Why are you trying to justify who throws things based because on whether or that, not you come knocking on the door? I don't because get that why is a I fucking irrational and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to get out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop the fucking wife. Uh, how does one inform the other? Oh, man. Go home and listen to the tape. Please. That's what they're for. Yes. You listen to the fucking tape. Oh, I'm gonna. That's your problem, and that's your whole thing that you've created. That's my problem, but my problem is that you don't trust me. No, what I don't trust you in this. What's going on in there, man? I don't trust you in this, and I want the trust back. You don't trust me in our marriage. Well, what is everything we're talking about? Our marriage. Tell me if you want to stop talking. You're saying you don't trust me personally, me. You just or you don't me. trust me in the marriage. What I don't understand, which is what's so different. Tell me the difference, please. I think I have in the last few hours now. No, I think you could probably explain it to me a little bit. Johnny expressed in the trial that his mother, Betty Sue, was extremely abusive to him, his dad, and siblings. Dad never reacted when Mama hit him or screamed at him. She was very high-strung, very nervous, anxiety, angry. Mom would... Would go off on a tangent uh, toward my, my father. He, he amazingly remained very, very stoic. We were all somewhat shell-shocked, you know, even if you just walked past, you, you sort of shield yourself because you didn't know what was gonna happen. An ashtray being flung at you, hits you in the head, or you'd get beat with a high heel shoe or, or a telephone or whatever's handy. There's a similarity, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, in how she treated Dad, she screamed, she yelled, hit, she called us names. So she gave each one of us a name. My, my name, for example, was uh, Violet, uh, which to some people, it, it wouldn't seem like it's anything, but Violet was my father's mother and my mom hated my father's mother, so. Every now and again, you would hear my mother just scream across the house. Come here, Violet, get in here, Violet. And Christy, my sister, knew very well that that was a, a deep, a deep cut psychologically, emotionally. The verbal abuse, the psychological abuse was almost worse than the, the beatings because the beatings right. were just physical pain. But the uh, psychological and emotional abuse, that's what, uh, that's what kind of tore us up, I think. He explained that Betty Sue attempted suicide when his dad finally had enough and left. Consequently, Johnny's childhood made him ill-equipped to get out of this situation with Amber. Those wishes don't come true. Those wishes don't come true. You want to fucking say to me, you piece of shit? What else? You don't have anything else to say to me? Cool. I wish you the best. Hey, why don't you fuck yourself? This bullying, if you will, was um, becoming too much to take. So why did you stay with Miss Her given this type of behavior? That's a very complicated answer. I I'm sure that it's somehow related to my father remaining stoic as my mother would beat him to death. So I stayed because I didn't want to hurt anyone especially Miss Heard, I didn't want to break her heart. I remember very well that when my father left, my mother, Betty Sue, had uh, that first attempt at suicide that I woke up to, and that visual in my head, and that was a direct result of my father's um, leaving. Miss Heard had spoken of suicide on a 
couple of occasions. So that also becomes a factor that always lives in the back of your brain that you fear. Many times when I would try to leave, she would stop me at the elevator with the security guards crying, screaming, I can't live without you, you know, I'm going to die. But you had to get out. But this is not love. Well, this is not happiness. Please this is not. This is Please stop. Please stop. Please, you're causing so much fucking stress. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to fucking die. You're causing me so much stress. Please stop. Sean, could you... Uh... Please, I want you to just go. I want you to take your medicine or whatever. Opponent. It wasn't my girl. It was she had become my opponent. The only thing I learned to do with it is exactly what I did as a child. Retreat, just take a step back, which I told her we need to remove ourselves from each other, even for an hour, a day, anything. That this can't go on. And no one can live like this. But why did I stay? I stayed, I suppose, because my father stayed. I suppose because I had been in that relationship with Vanessa. Beautiful, wonderful 14, 15 year relationship with Vanessa, the mother of my children. And that was lost. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to fail. Oh man. I wanted to what try to make it work. I thought maybe I could help her. Will, I will help try. Me if I'm not being well, I'm This is so hard to watch. I will try to help you. If I try to help you, and I can help you, fuck what I leave. If I try to help you, and I can't help you, say, baby, take in an hour, I'm in my fucking office. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, that's dip, 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 dip. That's all, folks. Um, I'm gonna push you guys into what the hell's hashtag buckle up, hashtag it's the law. Uh Kyle, thank you so much. Once Wednesday insane real witch. That laugh scared me. Me too, buddy. Me too. Thank you all so much for coming. I hope you liked the double feature today. Uh, and say hello to what the hell's for me. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag buckle up. Hashtag it's the law. Hashtag it's the law. As soon as you get in their chat, say it. Say it loud. Say it proud. Hashtag buckle up. Bye, everybody. DUI guy, Ray.